Welcome to the Steady Hand Coffee Break, a shorter, snappier version of our popular Steady Hand Cafe series. My name is David Toyn, and I'm the Chief Development Officer for Steady Hand, located in our Toronto office. Now, we're lucky to have such a great resource to help provide some information on an important part of the Canadian Social Security framework. I personally worry that too many Canadians who are eligible for GIS or the Guaranteed Income Supplement are unfortunately unaware of it and potentially missing out on thousands of dollars that they could be receiving from the government. I personally was involved in one situation where a couple in their 80s were unaware that they were eligible for GIS. And after we suggested that they enroll, they're now receiving over $7,000 annually, which is a sizable percentage of their annual spending requirements. Now, Owen Winklemolen is an absolute subject matter expert in GIS, and you wrote a tantalizing blog last October titled Five Strategies to Help Increase GIS by Up to $100,000. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to know more. But Owen, before we dive in, please tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do and your team at Plan Easy. For example, who do you work with? What do you do for them? And how do you differentiate yourself from the banks, for example? Yeah, thanks, David. So. Uh... At Plan Easy, I'm a certified financial planner um, and advice only financial planner. So at Plan Easy, we don't manage investments, we don't sell products, we just provide advice. And we work with a specific type of client. So we work with average Canadian households. We don't work with incorporated business owners or multiple rental property owners. We work with you know, fairly you know, simple, less complex situations. And really what we're doing is we're helping our clients navigate tax rules, benefit rules, different accounts and really helping them optimize their financial situation, their financial plan and make the most of the money that they, they do have, whether that's accumulating, you know, in their thirties, forties or fifties or the decumulation phase in their sixties, seventies and eighties. Fantastic. I just, I noticed your most recent blog was all about the, the challenge and decumulation around, around the sequence of uh, return rifts. So maybe we'll come back and get you to, Talk a little bit more about that in another coffee break. Great. But let's dig into GIS. Uh, and as I mentioned, you've you've written that article and other several excellent blogs with lots of details around uh, GIS. And we'll link to those blogs in our uh, YouTube video description below. But for now, let's dive in. Can you provide us with a brief overview of the Guaranteed Income Supplement or GIS, what it is and what's its role in the Canadian social support uh, system? Yeah, it's a great question. So the Guaranteed Income Supplement, GIS, it's a benefit that is tied to the old age security benefit. So these are sort of paired together. Um, okay. And it's mostly aimed at lower and moderate income households who are in retirement after the age of 65. And it's meant to provide a, a certain base level of retirement income uh, in Canada. And GIS is a fairly generous benefit. Um, so for an individual, it's worth over 12,000 a year. A couple is it can be worth over 14,000 a year, but it also has fairly high clawback rates. And so as you start to earn taxable income in retirement, uh, the guaranteed income supplement benefit is reduced. Now, there's a common misconception that the GIS benefit is only available to very low income retirees. Uh, and that couldn't be further from the truth. So over 2 million people uh, qualify for GIS every year in Canada. And that represents one in three, just about one in three retirees. Mm -hmm. So this is a widely available benefit. Um, and I suspect that number could be quite a bit higher if people were aware of that benefit and you know, situations like you described, right. uh, if there were people that had applied that maybe could be eligible, but just didn't realize it. Okay, so you need to be 65. Any other primary criteria for eligibility? Need to be 65, need to have a certain level of income. Now, it depends on the type of benefits you're receiving, if you're an individual or a couple, um, but this is a certain income threshold where you no longer qualify, and you have to have started old age security benefits. So again, okay. old age security, GIS are tied together. Right. So you need to be over 65 and have started the guaranteed income uh, OAS benefit, sorry. Now there's other qualification rules around residency, but um, essentially okay. if you qualify for old age security, you also qualify for the guaranteed income supplement. Okay. So that might be a reason why somebody would want to take OAS sooner, like as soon as 65, then defer it to 70. 
That's right. Yeah. If they okay. could be eligible, that's a very good reason to start at 65. Okay, great. Um, how difficult is it to apply for GIS benefits? And can you sort of walk us through what you need to do? Yeah, great question. So it's not difficult at all. So in, if you apply for old age security, the guaranteed income supplement application is just an additional form to fill out. You can call Service Canada. They'll walk you through the application process. Um, it's quite simple, but it does look at your previous year's income. Now, I think because it requires an application, there's you know potentially, like the situation you described, there's potentially people out there who have simply never applied for GIS, right. but could be eligible if they made that application. So I often like to default to let's apply, especially if somebody's close. Right. And the CRA, Service Canada, will, will tell us whether their income qualifies or not. Um, okay. It doesn't take much work to apply. And so okay. I, I would say that's the best bet. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, just give people a reason why they should apply. Like what, what would the amount of, uh, you, you sort of hinted at some numbers earlier, but uh, what are the benefits and how are they calculated? Yeah, so benefits can be quite generous, but they're reduced based on taxable income. So okay. at a maximum, uh, we're talking twelve to 14,000 a year. That does go up with inflation every year. Okay. Um, so with periods of higher inflation, those numbers could be quite a bit higher in the future. But it does get reduced based on taxable income. So it's uh, it's based on line 23600 on your tax return, uh, which is net taxable income. And as a household, every dollar you earn will reduce your GIS benefit by anywhere from 50 cents to 75 cents. So okay. any sort of taxable income, we're talking Canada pension plan payments, uh, right. RSP RIF withdrawals, uh, pension income from a defined benefit pension, even interest income on your savings account or dividend income on your investment account, all of those will trigger reductions, uh, clawbacks on your GIS benefit. So okay. most people don't receive the maximum. They're receiving two, three, four, seven, eight thousand a year. But this makes up a fairly significant portion of the retirement spending. Um, and over okay. the course of 30 years in retirement, we're talking easily 50, 100, 200 thousand dollars in potential benefits. I, I don't suppose the CRA sort of looks at all of these um, tax returns that people are submitting and sort of says, maybe using artificial intelligence or just human courtesy, hey, this person is eligible, but they're not getting GIS. Should we like give them a phone call? I think it's probably an opportunity if everybody wants to email or mail their MP. Um, that used to be a problem with, with CPP and OAS until they got yeah. to the point of just automatically enrolling at a certain age. So. I, I do think that should probably be in place. An application maybe shouldn't be required. It should just be by default. Um, but I also don't write the laws. So <laughs> fair enough. Now you you've hinted at some of the ways that GIS interacts with other income and uh, benefits like old age security and CPP. Um, does receive does receiving GIS benefits have an impact on your income tax? No, it doesn't. So yeah, GIS is a tax-free government benefit. Um, so no, it doesn't impact uh, your income tax at all. There is, it does get included on your tax return. So there is a way that it could maybe impact some of your other benefits, but okay. typically clients that we've worked with, their overall retirement income isn't high enough for that to right. be a factor. Yeah. Okay. Is there a sweet spot um, for people to be really seriously thinking about GIS or is there a threshold at which it's like, uh, you know, well, maybe your, your answer is probably going to be irrespective, you should apply because circumstances change. So circumstances can change, but I think a couple good thresholds to keep in mind is that in general, per individual, if you have retirement income, um, that's over 22,000 a year, 25,000 a year, you're probably outside of the range of GIS benefits. So for an individual, you know, earning 25,000 or more in taxable income, whether that's CPP or pension or old age security, uh, or as a couple, maybe 50,000 or more, you probably wouldn't be eligible. But again, there's always strategies that, that could make that possible for a few years, um, if not more. Now, 
in terms of assets, I would say if you're as an individual, if you have 200,000 and 250,000 or less in assets, or as a couple, if you have you know, 400,000 to 500,000 or less in retirement assets between TFSA, RSP, you should probably be thinking about guaranteed income settlement. So you might be not low, low income, but even in moderate income situations like that, there could be an opportunity to qualify for GIS even for a few years uh, right. if we plan things strategically. Okay, great. And in your experience working with clients that have gone through this process of applying for benefits, um, any advice or tips uh, before people head into this uh, for you know navigating the system? Yeah, so there's a few strategies that uh, we've come up with that uh, that are good to think about. But in general, it does require some pre-planning. So what we often say is that, there are certain times when GIS planning needs to be top of mind. Uh, age mm. 60 is one. So when you okay. when you are eligible for Canada Pension Plan, um, that's your first opportunity to start those benefits. That's often a good time to think about GIS planning. Age 64, 65. So right before GIS and OAS begin is another important time. And then in your sort of late 70s, 72, when RSPs need to be converted to a RIF or right. a Lira to a LIF, that's another important time to think about GIS planning. Okay. Earlier, the better. So late 50s is often the best time. We still have room to maneuver, you know, do strategic contributions, withdrawals. Um, so the earlier, the better. Um, but before age 60, 65 is the best time. So what? One one con one consideration is as you're heading into your late fifties, um, early sixties, is you know kind of melting down your RSP, yes, in order to reduce your RIF or or your you know your yeah your your RIF income. Yeah, that's right. So that's one of the strategies we outlined in the blog post is yeah. that. RSP RIF withdrawals are very bad from a, a GIS perspective. So imagine right. you take $1,000 out of your RSP and RIF. What many people don't realize is the next year that causes a reduction on your GIS benefits of $500 to $750. Right. And it's, it's hard to see the connection there, but all of a sudden next year you're going to see your GIS benefits go down. So what yeah. we often like to do, if we can do that sort of pre-planning, if somebody has 50, 60, 100, 200,000 in their RSP, we might plan on strategically drawing that down before age 64 uh, and before those clawbacks begin. Right. Yeah. Now, th there's a lot of tax to be paid on those withdrawals. So I, I would do that very carefully. Again, work right. with a financial planner to plan that out. But the tax right. you have to pay is often much better than the clawbacks you lose on GIS in the future. Awesome. Well, as we close out our discussion on, on GIS, are there any sort of pitfalls or common misperceptions uh, that you would like to highlight given your experience working with people about GIS? I think there's a few kind of opportunities. One, starting CPP benefits a little bit earlier is often a, a good thing to think about. So as much as you get more CPP if you delay starting those benefits, CPP income does trigger GIS clawbacks. So often right. we'll look at starting those benefits early. Um, certainly want to use a TFSA instead of an RSP. We've worked with clients that, uh, you know, their investment advisor or just through their own self-directed contributions, they've been adding $100 a week, $100 a month to their RSP, not realizing the effect they'll have on their benefits in the future. So in general, we want to be very strategic about uh, making contributions to a TFSA versus an RSP. And then the other opportunity is that the first year of retirement, um, it's a very little known opportunity, but because GIS is based on your previous year's income, the first year of retirement, your income has dropped quite dramatically. So usually you've less, uh, left a higher paying job, you're now in retirement, perhaps lower income in that first year of retirement you can call Service Canada and apply to have your GIS benefit based on this year's income rather than the previous year's income. Hmm. That can sometimes provide an extra two, three, five, seven thousand dollars in GIS benefits oh that normally you would have to wait a year to get. Um, right. So that's another opportunity if you're in your first year of retirement. 
and those GIS benefits are not taxable. That's right, non-taxable income. Right. I mean, it just it it just it blows me away the opportunity for Canadians to save on taxes, increase uh, their wealth by getting some of this um, advice only uh, you know planning that you and your your colleagues in the community provide. So. I guess my I implore people to really seriously think about not doing this themselves, but just go pay a modest amount of money and you'll be blown away by the return uh, from that investment. Oh, and as we close out on our GIS discussion, um, I think I know the answer to this, but what advice would you give to individuals who may be eligible but not, not yet applied? Late 50s, reach out even, even for an initial consultation. Um, an advice-only financial planner within the, th the first 30 minutes or so. Uh, and we at Plan Easy, we do a free 30-minute discovery call. Often we can ascertain whether or not this type of planning could be a benefit in the future. So the actual mechanics, the planning year by year can be quite a bit more complex, but it's fairly easy to identify opportunities like this where you know a little bit of forward thinking can save thousands, if not tens of thousands or more, in uh, in benefit clawbacks brilliant well owen your expertise on this important topic has been enormously helpful and uh, deeply appreciated certainly by me and hopefully by everybody watching if anyone would like to connect with you what's the best way to do that yeah so they can go to planeasy.ca and click start planning uh, and they'll be able to set up an account with us and then book a, a free discovery call with one of our financial planners fantastic and we'll also include a link to your contact information in the uh, the video description uh, below here as well. Great. And so let's close out on that. And, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching the Coffee Break video on GIS or Guaranteed Income uh, Supplement. Owen and I have also discussed separately the new FHSA or First Home Savers account in a separate video that you can find on the Steady Hand YouTube channel. And you don't have to be under 65 to care about FHSAs. Uh, we gave some ideas for some older people, parents and grandparents, uh, where your kids may be eligible and, and they don't even know about it. So head over to that video and check it out. And there are so many other investment and financial related videos and resources that you can find on the Steady Hand YouTube channel and our website, steadyhand.com. So be sure to subscribe to both the channel uh, as well as our blog to be kept up to date on all things related to investing and planning. Owen, again, thank you for your time today, and thank you everybody for watching, and bye for now.